welcome to this lesson on static electricity. We're going to look at charges today, attraction, and repulsion. To understand electricity, it helps to first discuss our current ideas of the basic structure of matter. What are we made of? What is matter composed of? Well, we have protons, neutrons, and electrons. All matter is composed of these three basic particles. Protons and neutrons are tightly held in an atom's nucleus, while electrons are often loosely held as they orbit the nucleus. We now believe that each of these three elementary particles are composed of even smaller particles, bosons, gluons, quarks, etc., but we need only involve these three to understand electricity. Protons have a positive charge and are attracted to electrons. Neutrons have zero charge. Electrons have a negative charge and are attracted to protons. Because electrons have more freedom of movement than protons and neutrons, electrons can become charged. That is, objects can become charged when an imbalance of positive and negative charge occurs within that object due to an excess or deficit of electrons. There are three basic ways for an object to become charged. The first way is charging by contact. As two neutral substances come into contact, one substance will often have a greater affinity or attraction for electrons so that when the substances separate, one will have lost electrons and the other gained electrons. An example of this is when laundry in the dryer gets full of static. What happens is that some fabrics such as cotton may have a slightly higher electron affinity and therefore steal electrons from other fabrics such as polyester or nylon. Rubber soles on shoes and nylon carpeting can also induce static charge due to electron movement. Another method is charging by induction. If you take a balloon and rub it on your hair or sweater, it will become negatively charged by friction. If you then take the balloon and place it against the wall, it will often stick there. This is due to the negatively charged balloon driving loosely held electrons in the wall away from the wall surface, making the surface of the wall positive. Overall, the wall is still neutral, but part of the wall is positive and another part, deeper in, will be negative. Notice the wall has a balance of positive and negative charge, but there is an induced positive charge on the surface. Another method of becoming charged is by contact. When a negatively charged object is brought into contact with a neutral object, electrons from the negative object will often cross over to the neutral object making it negative as well. In any negatively charged object there are repulsive forces acting between all the electrons. If the object comes into contact with a neutral object, electrons can more easily transfer to the neutral object until an equilibrium state exists between all the attractive and repulsive forces. Here's a short video clip that illustrates attraction and repulsion. At this point, the pith ball and the char and the rod are not charged, and therefore there is very little attraction and repulsion. With the ebonite rod being charged, let's see what happens. As you can see, there is attraction between the two. The pith ball is still neutral, but now there is attraction. If the pith ball and the ebonite rod have the same charge, then we will witness repulsion, as you can see. <laughs> 